Hello and welcome back to the Blade of Akai channel. You are watching Star Citizen and we are here in the Revel in York hangar to witness the Vanguard Hoplite. Uh, the Vanguard Hoplite was released a patch or so ago. Um, I would say a bit like the Buccaneer, a bit under the under the hood, under the radar. Uh, <laughs> I have one because basically I went with a Tavarin uh, Prowler, and this is the replacement ship until the Prowler is done. Now the Vanguard Hoplite is pegged to be uh, a cross between a kind of dedicated fighter ship. Um, and a personnel carrier so it does a bit of both now we gain access through the back here let's move back don't want to get crushed by the door that would be bad that comes down quite nicely but unfortunately as you may have just noticed the ramp coming down has caused the landing gear to be um, touched off, well, taken off the floor a little bit, um, and uh, it's kind of pivoting on the on the nose landing gear. Anyway, let's talk about loadout. So, it's quite a well-equipped ship. Uh, we have an Apocalypse Arms size 4 uh, mounted to a gimbal on the front here, so this is a big-ass Gatling gun. Does a lot of damage if you can spool it up at the right time and land it on the target. And in addition to that, we have four nose cone laser cannons, size 2, uh, bearing MVSA laser cannons. Four of those. I'm not sure what we can swap out on that because that's quite a specific fit. And indeed, it's not giving me any options there other than what's already installed. So... I would suggest that um, you know there's a limitation on what you can put in there. Uh, on top of that, we have two quad racks, uh, two bearing quad racks. Uh, each oh, actually not each containing ignites. We've got ignite twos over there, and we've got dominator twos over here. So we've got two different uh, two different missile types there. Uh, we've got two coolers, size 1 coolers, Aegis um, Tundras. We have two power plants, Aegis Vortex. There's one at the back as well, which is hiding. There it is. And going back to weapons, up on top there's a manned turret, which has uh, an ammo box on a sawbuck. Now, let me just get that readable SW16BR2 Sawbuck so that's size 2 and there's two of those uh, obviously being a manned turret we're not going to be well I'm assuming we're not going to be able to fire those um, as I'm playing on my own let's have a look inside so we've got the nice little ramp and we can close the exterior. A nice smooth action there. And a reaffirming clunk as it all locks in. So there's not much back here because basically this is the ramp access. <laughs> uh, and here is the crew capacity. So basically this is where everyone would sit. Let's enter a seat for now. That comes down quite speedily. Um, that's the exterior view. Okay, so while seated I can't look at the interior. Um, so while we're here we'll just have a look around the exterior of the ship. It's got a very vanguard design. The hoplite differs very little in terms of you know the shape of the ship. And it has this lovely green war paint shall we say okay and those wings um, expand out when you go into flight mode so you take it out of landing mode well I'm assuming anyway I haven't seen it happen myself okay up we get so 
seats. One, two, three, six seats. So we've got a crew of six. Um, and this is what I'm assuming to be a gun rack. So everyone's equipment will be held there. So, yeah, we're carrying six in the way of troops. It's a little kind of corridor space. Not a lot going on in here functionally. Uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Or that. So, yeah, we've got some lockers. I've got a little tool tip there. Oh, just to enter the pilot seat. So, it's just a single pilot seat here. Actually, thinking about this, we should be able to enter the turret. There we go. There we go. Right. Let's get into the enter turret. Six passengers, one turretman, and a pilot. So a total of eight individuals. Eight souls ready to be lost in space. Okay, typical turret arrangement. Um, the visibility is a bit poor on the sides here, but then if there was more visibility, all you would see is gun mount anyway. We'll take a closer look at that when we're out in the field. Time to get in the pilot seat. Come on. Just take your time. Um, I, so I got out of a seat that wasn't actually there. <laughs> so there's a little bit of work that needs to happen. Pilot seat is slick as anything. And we have the usual paraphernalia on the dashboard. It's all very much a compressed view in here. Um, not so much the big screens dotted about the cabin. Um, however, reading it all is another thing. Apparently there's a key bind that you can press to actually look at the screens in a bit more detail. I don't know what it is. Um, I haven't been able to figure that out yet. Visibility in here pretty good I would say. Uh, this little block of, of cowling at the top here is is a bit hindrancy. Um, both sides. However, you know, generally speaking, it's a pretty good outlook. Right, let's get out of here. Right. So the animation on the seat didn't work on the exit, so there's some work there. Uh, yeah, like I said before, we've got some lockers in here, and that's about it. So it's a it's a pretty much a functional vehicle. Get troops into the battle and be able to defend yourselves while doing so. Let's take this out for a flight. Okay, here we are in free flight, and straight away. It's moving nice nice and swiftly for it's actually quite a sizable ship if you ask me. Um yeah, it's no Starfarer, it's no Drake Caterpillar, but it's still quite a big lumbering beast. And despite that, it's it turns quite nicely. Now, I, what I need to do is make sure my gimbals are locked. There we go. So doesn't really affect it that much um, it makes it a little bit more quick to react by doing that because we lose that dead space in the middle where you're allowing yourself to aim at things let's get up to speed and we have a terminal velocity terminal SEM velocity of 180 meters per second and when we boost We are looking at 560. So it was able to make a, a 180 turn there. Um, what I did feel there was that the engines lacked enough grunt to make the Delta V work.
Right, let's do some asteroid flight and see how well we do. Proximity alert. So, yeah, it kind of drifts off quite a bit, which is something you would expect in a heavier ship. So it's quite hard to keep it on the straight and narrow. But this ship isn't really all about manoeuvrability, um, so we have to take that on the chin. It's about getting troops to the field and being able to defend yourself. So yeah, we've got some raw firepower there. <laughs> so left click it, by default is the uh, is the apocalypse apocalypse arms <laughs> chain gun. Let's do some asteroid destroying. Go on. Oh, are we? I'm I'm out of ammo already. Oh no, I'm not. It just overheated. Yeah, it's overheating. So, unfortunately, that gun overheats quite quickly. Disappointingly so. Uh, the laser cannons, they sound like they pack quite a punch. And with four of them placed in exactly the same position on the nose of the craft, I imagine they are actually quite effective. Um, so we're going to have to jump into Vandal Swarm and just see how effective they are. Uh, if I just pop out into this view quickly, you can see that... Uh, if I swap to this view... That... Yeah, I have both mouse buttons pressed. That man turret is not wanting to fire at all. Uh, there may be a way around that, I don't know, but... For now, I'm assuming that we need a body in there. Time for Vandal Swarm. Okay, so we're in Vandal Swarm. Um, we now need to find targets and see how well this machine does against them. I should target this guy. Oh, I'm drifting into... Oh, I just smacked into an asteroid. That wasn't good. That was not good at all. <laughs> so, basically, I went about there and didn't get a single kill. So, it's quite difficult to get this thing spooled up while... Uh, so, he just... Harry carried himself. Right. <laughs> and too much drift again into an asteroid. And finally we get a kill, but we had to be up pretty close to get that. Yeah, those four cannons on the front do quite a bit of damage. It has to be said. Yeah, it's definitely a weapon that requires you to be up close and personal with your target. I would imagine that this this ship goes up against the bigger the bigger ships a, a bit more easily. And there we go, another one down. Ace status. Right, that's enough of Vandal Swarm. It's time to move on into the PU and see what this like is like against a bigger ship. Okay, so we're at Olisar now and I've gotten into the hoplite. It took me a while to spawn it. I had to leave the server and come back again. Uh, but it's all good now. 
Now, let's see. We have the landing gear deployed. So, that means the wings are retracted. Now, if I hit N, there we go. Landing gear has been retracted. Um, and the wings popped out. So, like I said, those wings would come out. Anyway, that was just a, a quick little thing. Now, I'm just trying to negotiate with someone here to get into a dogfight situation with a caterpillar. Um, so, when I come back, we shall hopefully be commencing the dogfight. Okay, I've come to Korea, um, and Lucky Strike has agreed to do the dogfight with me on uh, Hoplite versus Bigger Ships. He's in a caterpillar. He's also got two manned gunners, or sorry, two gunners manning the turrets even. Um, we've got a chap called Inferno and another chap called Adam. Um, and we're about to get started with a dogfight to see how well the hoplite can manage against a bigger ship. Right, let's get this started. We seem to have rammed. Okay. I can't find the target now. Here we go. So I don't know if I've taken their shields out or not. The shields on the caterpillar are pretty substantial. I, I seem to have lost the ability to maneuver. And okay, I think. <laughs> I think we rammed it in the end. Um, it looks like Star Citizen is locked up. So it looks like I uh, crashed out. Um, basically, the Hoplite was holding its own against the Caterpillar. The, to be fair, the Caterpillar was doing pretty darn good at uh, stripping me of my shields. Um, what I was finding a particular troublesome area was maneuverability. Um, being able to sidestep the, the maneuvering thrusters just didn't really do it for me. Um, and ultimately, I think I lost those maneuvering th um, thrusters near the end there and was unable to sidestep at all, um, and which ultimately um, saw me piling into the Caterpillar and destroying it. So that said, I think the application of the hoplite would be against the bigger the bigger ships, um, you know, doing uh, reckeys onto the larger ships. Um, however, there is limitation there because those strips, uh, those shields were easily stripped out, um, and that left the hoplite very vulnerable very quickly. That said, if you had if you had a fleet of hoplites trying to take down something like a Polaris, um, take the shields down and maybe send in a, a, an infiltration team, that might be that might be an application for the hoplite. Um, I think it's a real stretch if we're talking about things like Idrises and Javelins and even the Bengal, which I don't think we'll be able to interact with in any kind of way like that. Um, so yeah, this has been the Hoplite video. I'm just here chilling out over the top of Olasar, watching people floating around in their ships, listening to quantum drives. <laughs> <laughs> signing off on this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to hit like share and subscribe and i shall see you all 
in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye bye for now.